David De Gea, seven shots on target, seven goals. Like trying to, trying to goal. this one Let's go! Oh, he's late to Oh, he's late to Tottenham. He's him. He's him. He's him. He's him. He's him. He's him. <laughs> What a day. You type, type for weeks. It brings smiles to my face, man. Just what like, brings smiles to your face? Now the sun was out today, isn't it? Like, I don't know what encouraged the sun to, like, it was mad sunny today. I don't know what brought the sun out. Like, there was just, I don't know if it was, like, a turn of events that happened last night or, like, God just saying, you know what? A lot of good things have happened recently. Have another one. Have some sun. Have some good, some good weather. I don't know. But... Just happy the sun came out today, isn't it? Just, just happy. It's just great when the sun comes out. I mean, you know what they say: the sun must shine eventually. But you know, sometimes that eventually takes a while. Yeah, you're gonna be waiting a while, boy. Shout out Oluwa Shemilori PLC going bankrupt. Yeah, nah, that that video of Grealish dribbling didn't do much for his for his share price. I've told you we back I'm up anyway because of that concert stock right straight back up. So we're good, man. I'm not I'm no, I'm missed. literally I've broken even again. I don't yeah, we got a treble on that stock. Should have sold it while it was high. But then at the end of the day, it dipped. But guess what? Concert brought that shit straight back up. So you're just investing in straight brum talent. You're just like you're just just dipping into the they best laughed of at the Ezri Konzo stock and it's up. Esri Console is literally 2021 and was like, who's really doing Esri Console talk in the UK? Who's really who's really giving flowers to Esri Console in the UK? It was tier three that had to do it. Who's this man? This fella right here. Let me put out this tweet. Clear out needed. I just keep seeing clear. If I search on Twitter the, the, the term clear out and see how many and how many times. No, there's nothing like Arsenal Twitter after. There's nothing like Arsenal Twitter after a loss or after a demoralizing loss. Even to be fair, even your just standard losses, you lot lose your head so quickly. It's just like you understand why it's just fun to watch from the outside. Like you lot will start like breaking down your whole team. Like CNR six players need to be sold. I was seeing today like there was people pissed off that Gabriel and Saliba had played. Like Gabriel and Saliba were fit for the whole season. And they were saying that they needed to be rested. I was just like, Rah. I think we need to start a, right at the def, with the defending champions going out. In penalties. You want to start there? I don't mind. That's, there's just there's so much hate to go around. Start. There's that's so much hate to go around. Start. I'm so happy. Hey, to, I'm happy to start where, wherever. Misery. One one thing I've realized this season is crazy how misery love companies because a lot of losers just put on their TVs to watch other teams, but like they don't. Oh, to, bro, I've got nothing to live for in this season no more. I've yeah, but that's the thing. If, if but the difference between, I think, if my team doesn't do well, I just don't think I'd watch football. Nah, but I watch it. No, but this is like this is this is a trophy for me. This felt like a this last week has felt like a trophy. It felt like a trophy. Just seeing you lot just crumble and just like be so disgusting and so like just just lose in the most like heinous way possible. Like just love it. But I'm what, sorry, maybe I'm a the, sick. This the, bit, this the bit I don't get. This the bit I don't get because. Nothing should feel like a trophy for you this season because the three teams you hate the most are all going to win something. Like, if Arsenal don't win something, Man City will win. If Man City don't win, Liverpool will win. So, like, what? But do you know what that means? I, that means two of you didn't win something. And do you know what? I can live with those odds. I can I can live with those odds. If it means to, one person's got one person's got to take it, fair enough. Fair enough. Enough, no, I think you, know I think you should just, I think you should just outright come out. I think you should just come outright come out and say you don't care about Man City and be honest, nobody does. No, honest. but it, it, whichever way it lands, whichever way it lands, whichever no, way no, it I'm lands, saying like, it, no, 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 the way the way you want it to land is that you want City to win because you don't care about them. I don't know, no City fans, so it's whatever. Their thing's not real anyway. So say it then, if say it, land, it, yeah, you don't care about if it. If it lands on City, it lands on City. If it doesn't. I've got other people to call. And that's the that's the beautiful thing about hate. You ain't call, there's no City fan to call. There's none. There's so none. If, so if it went out in a situation where like City don't win, you've lost. Nah, not really. Why? Because that still means Liverpool or Arsenal didn't win. So you know what? One of you's getting it. 
I don't, I don't get, I don't get what you mean. So what? So what? So when do you are you gonna get expectations for yourself? No, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I don't know. I, 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 I can't tell you. You, 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 you we'll started, that the, you started the season by saying you're in the title race and you were challenged. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm. I got humbled so quickly. Got humbled. What month? I'm in the did you say right you got now. humbled. I got humbled so so calmly. But you know what? what? You know what? Is is nights like tonight? Is weeks like to? Is is weeks like this that make it all worth it? It makes all the stupidness that I said over the last six or seven months, all yeah. the dumb foolery, it just makes it worth it when it's like, all right, yeah, now we're in the mud, but like it's it's time to drag some people down with us. It's time for like all the Arsenal fans who said, yeah, you know what, you know what, God of Honor, Old Trafford, yeah, yeah, nah, don't worry, bring on Bayern Munich. You know what? Is our team is Real Madrid really that much better than than Arsenal? It, like all of those we moments, didn't even play. We didn't even play Real Madrid one moments, and two. It builds into like today. This is what makes it. This is what makes it worth it. Like, this is this is this is what we live for. When you lot are saying, "Yeah, no," nah, no. Who and the funny thing to, is, who no, the funny thing is, of? you got go, you got you've gone way too early, buddy. You should have waited. I've not. Oh, I need to wait. Nah, man. I see where I see where it goes from here. Unfortunately, I've seen where it goes. <laughs> We went to we the oh, UCL Sammy, to Man City time. for a year. Now we want it back. Yeah, no, nah, this 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 Champions League runs only going one way. We've seen this story before as well. From when they, from the way they faced Man City and still won, you just know what they're about this season. Nathan, chill on my Wi-Fi, man. I'm trying. I'm I'm, I'm trying over here. Work with me. Fifteenth minute. Six minutes in, no, seven minutes in, basically now. Yeah. Been decent so far. Um, yeah, calm. You know what? Calm. I'll take that. Like Mourinho stands hate watching because they're washed. Yeah, I'm a bit washed right now, but you know what? As long as I can bring someone down with me, Shem's right. Misery loves company. So I don't think, but I don't think you lot are bringing anybody down. I just think the other teams will go again, and you lot will be in the same place next year. And you know what? From what we've seen, you lot will probably be in the same place next year as well. So you know what? We can all just link up again next year, just do the same shit all over again. It'll just be lovely, isn't it? Just a link up. Sometimes you just need a yearly link up with your man though. Just like, yeah, ah, oh, shit. Got knocked out again. No tire race. The tire race ended again. Ah, what are you going to do? Ah, ah, what are you going to do? Ah, ah what are you going to do, man? Just link up with the man though. Just chop it up sometimes, man. Just like, yeah, man, we just got... Got asses kicked in the Champions League, just like didn't even pop a fight. It's calm, it's calm, it's calm. Ch- quarterfinals was our limit anyway. That's what calm. Just link up with the man, them just chop it up, just reason sometimes. That's it. Just reason with the man, them sometimes. Madrid is good and Sammy's back. Say it ain't so. Sammy, Sammy, he's on your neck here, fam. Sammy, you gotta defend yourself. It's like Wood Green song, sits postcode linked up, just the beef arsenal. You see, Nathan, you're right, but the thing is. If Arsenal wasn't going to every single block and just blaming off their gun and saying, yeah, 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 who's bad? Who's really stepping outside? Nobody would come to beef you. But Arsenal fans just feel the need to go to every single block. Like, you're in Wood Green and you'll go all the way to Beckenham. All the way, you're, then you're in the Midlands and then you're in Fulham. Like, you're beefing postcodes that you don't even need to beef. But you'll still beef them for some reason. And then you're wondering why there's Fulham man in your end blaming off their gun. You're wondering why there's man from flipping... Norbury in your ends, blaming off their gun. You're wondering why there's man from Cheltenham blaming off their gun in Wood Green. Because you don't love to go to other ends and make so noise. At the, so at the Etihad, the game ended 1-1 and uh, Real, Madrid, Real Madrid went on penalties. Now, we expected uh, Man City. Talk your shit, Nate. Talk your shit, Sammy. We Talk expected, we expected, a, we expected, or not we, but most people expected Man City to go through as it was tied 3 3 and they're back at the Etihad. But expected Kevin De Bruyne and the world class full forward and to step up. Banks, how did that game go? How did that game go? Guardiola's going to bring out all of his tactics, all of his formations, all of his triangles, all of his world-class players, all of his <laughs> sideline. And at the end of the day, 
Lucas Vasquez is going to step up and say it means more to Real Madrid. Real Madrid need this European trophy more than Manchester City do. And that's going to be that at the end of the day. Like all the tactics, all of the, you know, what Phil Foden in the hole, Kevin De Bruyne just world class on the right hand side crosses, Erling Haaland, the most deadly finisher ever. <coughs> all of it just doesn't mean much when you come up against the heritage. Because this is nothing else apart from Real Madrid understanding. We are Real Madrid and we need to win a European trophy. How are we going to get to the semi-finals? We're going to do whatever it takes. That's that's the performance I saw from Real Madrid. That's the performance I saw from Rudiger. It wasn't a performance of, oh, when I'm in this position, I need to make sure that my left back is in this space and I need to pass it to him using the outside. This was just men deciding, you know what? We're going to defend for our lives. You, you, you're, you're not going to beat us. That's what Real Madrid said to Manchester City. Whether we, however this gets done, whether we get we nick a goal or whether we take this to penalties, Real Madrid looked at Manchester City dead in the eyes, came to the Etihad. They've never won before at the Etihad, mind you. Never had never, never won. And said, you know what? You're not beating us today. Because if you can pick out what Real Madrid did tactically, apart from that, to say that they're gonna win this quarter final, I'll I'll happily listen. But I watched that semi-final of that quarter final, I literally just looked at it like this is Real Madrid just Locking in and saying, you know what, we're going to the next round. If you can they pick up another like, way, they played like Arsenal. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, apparently, they used um, Arteta's deep block tactics. The boring tactics. That's against football. That's against football law and football heritage. And everybody loaded him and cast him out for. But uh, at the end of the day, yeah, I just want to look at how some of the Man City players. Do they get a bly because they're just coming off the back of a treble and they're current champions, so they're allowed to lose at home? Because I'm not just looking at the players. I'm not just looking at the tactics. They did what they needed, but I'm looking at certain individuals and I'm looking at their fans. The discourse over the last 24 hours since they've gone out has just been how poor and weak Man City fans are. Something we all laugh at them for in England. How weak their fans are, their fan base are are just not mentally locked in they are. The fact that they won the coin toss and refused to give Bernardo Silva the ball back straight away for his penalty is an indictment. Like They only have themselves to blame for going out because that does have a part to play. The fact that they, were, they weren't even allowed at home and they didn't make it a hostile environment for the visitors. Um, they say they, You know what I mean? They say they play it all the time, but the fact that they were playing Hey Jude uh, the speakers on the playlist. You gotta miss that song out while Jude Bellingham's in town. You're just giving him more fuel, even though he didn't really have a great game. But that touch for the goal in which he scored was scintillating. Banks, I've got to kick you out because your wife is horrendous. But that touch that he scored, the touch leading up to the goal in which he scored, Jude Bellingham was scintillating. But if you're looking at his out outright performance, Jude Bellingham wasn't special. Um, I say the centre backs were Nacho was, Rudiger was, um, L Lunin was. Um, but as as individuals, the strike, the attackers, or Jude or the stars, so Jude, Foden, not really, they weren't really of it at it. Bernardo Silva was actually decent throughout the game, but when it come to it, when it came to it at the end, when the penalty, the penalty just looked like penalty was, yeah, boy, penalty was quite embarrassing. Same for Kovacic as well. Um, Real Madrid. As much as people, I think heritage is something that gets played out and experience is something that we like to take for granted. We use the term loosely. And I think it, if there's any team and there's only one team it really applies for in football, and it's actually Real Madrid. What's it's this, heritage? Yeah, and experience, yeah. Mm. Because no matter the state Real Madrid come into, we can look at Real Madrid's second Champions League in recent times. I'd say the 2017 one. Horrendous season. We can look at we can look at in that three peat. There's two Champions Leagues that were horrendous. One of them was very good. That they were in great form. The two against Liverpool were actually they were in good form. And no one one they jammed. Remember they jammed their way to the final. Like no, and then two of them before in the in the three peat, their league form wasn't really the best, and they were coming off of the back of like they were on the verge of going out in either the round of sixteen or the quarters, and they just turn it around like a two goal deficit. But Real Madrid heritage actually applies to them. It doesn't run out for them. It runs out for Bayern Munich, runs out for Barcelona, yeah. runs out for every team that you would say is a superpower, except for Real Madrid. 
they had that drought. They had that drought pre in the in the two thousand. I say from 03 to from 03 to the early tens. But since twenty seventeen, I won't even say twenty fourteen. Since twenty seventeen, they've locked in, and it's been it's been it's been a it's been a the Champions League's been a farmers league. I say that because of Real Madrid. Well, Real Madrid it's just been, it's been Real Madrid and the rest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Nathan, yeah. he was very close to you, sir. Nathan, he was close. My, my internet gave up after 13 minutes. Fair what are we saying? So, wait, 15 Barca, 16 was who? Real Madrid. Real Madrid. 17, 17. Real Madrid. 18, Real Madrid. 19, Liverpool. 20, Chelsea, COVID. No, Chelsea. No, Bayern Chelsea. Munich. Bayern Munich, COVID. 21, Chelsea. 22. You won 22. Real Madrid. Madrid. Yeah. 23, City. 20. Like, in, in that span in which we've named from 2016 to now, which is to 2023, how many how many titles are up for grabs? Out to eight? Seven? Yeah, that's what my math's correct. Eight titles. 23 is eight. Eight titles. And they've grabbed four? That's right. That's Real Madrid and the rest. To be fair, They've it's just four, it's just five. what Real Madrid do. It's, it's what Real Madrid do. It's what Real Madrid do. Like when it comes to knowing how to. So, but again, I say it. Again, I game. say this. Again, I say this. In several of them, eight of, of them titles in which they won, predominantly this one. Why, when people are doing the predictors and saying who's going to go through, why do they not just say yeah, Real Madrid's going to win? Like, why do Real Madrid because... always have to? Come from uh, only a couple of them have Real Madrid been the clear favourites. Every time they've won, very rarely are they the actual clear favourites from the jump. So why now is everyone going to? Oh yeah, Real Madrid heritage. How can we think like this time? See, I would say seventy five percent forty. Watch it. Watching Real Madrid play, they don't play great football a lot of the time. They? Like, they've got quality players, but they don't always play great football. But they always play effective football. They like especially um especially cup competitions. Apart from Man City in um 2023 when they got popped, Last you year, rarely yeah. think of um tournaments where they get popped out of the Champions League. That's because the, thing. the Champions because they understand the Champions League is literally moments. Real Madrid mm. is a team built on moments. It's loads of stars. Well, typically, traditionally, it's been loads of stars, loads of Mavericks put together to have good moments. It's rarely ever built off passages of play. Let me not disrespect Ancelotti, but it's rarely ever built off passages of play. It's rarely ever built. A system could be set up, but then for you to have their moments, whereas like shapes and working, I'd, I rarely see that. Oh, you're right, still. The Ajax team gave them a bopping. Yeah, yeah. Gave them but, a bopping. But yeah, on, on to City though, Banks. Uh, is Foden getting enough scrutiny? Do you think? Where all of over them... the two ties? Over the two? No, no. Let's talk about the the stand up players. Over the two ties, how was Foden? He scored from the first tie. He scored a great goal. First tie. Was first in the tie. First tie. Was it was poor in the first, first time. I didn't obviously. I didn't watch it live. I was at the Emirates. Um, oh, I flex. You're a proper gunner. No, just means just means fuck off. It just yeah, means I didn't watch. Gunner, I didn't watch the City match live. From the highlights, it looked like he was involved. Looked like he hooped. This one again, I remember. I, I, I remember from the second leg, him missing a big chance, or I think he messed up a big chance. And then when you got Real Madrid sitting in and defending the way they're gonna defend, it. pick the, the lock, like, pick the lock. That's what I'm saying. You need, pick you need, lock. you need um the lights of Foden to come to the fore. And and flipping get involved and do what he needs to do. I don't again. It's weird because I don't with Kevin De Bruyne coming back in. I don't know whether the, the, the dynamic changed, and I just don't think trying to service the Bruyne and Foden in the same team. No, we're, we're no, not, we're not gonna move. We're not gonna move the goal. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. I'm not moving the goalposts. I'm not moving yeah. the goalposts because Foden. This is um away from the fact that Foden didn't play well, but. Eventually, it's gonna have, like for me, it's gonna have to be one or the other. Like you saw the way Foden played at the Bernabeu compared to when Kevin De Bruyne comes back into it. Like it's hard to it's hard to go through two players. Like that like, Kevin De Bruyne is the better player than Phil Foden, so you go through Kevin De Bruyne. Phil you Foden, go you're, two like, you think you can go? You, you, what what play? Where does the Arsenal play go through? It goes through Odegaard. Yeah, that's, that's your best Arsenal. Player. 
that's that's Arsenal, but you can go through two players still. So. That's not. It's hard though. Is it, no, it's not hard because it's not hard because it's hard. It's harder to defend if you go through one. And traditionally, they go through more than one player. When when David Silva was there, were they going through just Kevin De Bruyne or they have, have, have other options of people who can also pick? It's first Kevin not, De Bruyne. No, Kev, David, Silva, going, David Silva. David Silva was more in that Bernardo Silva role where he's a connector. You yeah, but no, it was yeah, but it was still it could still go for him. Like the, his gun don't jam. Is this, is saying. Me, this is not me saying. This is not me saying. Um, that Foden shouldn't be involved, but it's You're just creating when you've an got excuse. two players that huh? I'm shooting him an excuse. Yeah, you think so? I'm I, I'm just looking poor, at it. That's, like, that's a poor narrative. So you so if you put Emil Smith Rowe and Odegaard in the same team, you think you can put the play through going through both of them? Yeah, it's balance. You can balance the you can balance the play on, but maybe in crunch time. Maybe in crunch time, it could go through one place more than never. But having two outlets, I don't see that as an issue. This is the same thing Arsenal fans said when they said we can't get um, Ozil and Fabregas in the same team. So, Ozil, Fabregas, go chop. Like, bro, you, it's fine. It, it, it's fine. It's never Wait, been an issue before. It's the first time I'm hearing it. But um, we need to... 21 minutes in, right? we still got ages. To, we still got a lot of things to talk about. Get through some of these comments, though. Jason's in the house. Uh, nah, yeah, Jason's in the house. It's the know how we can talk about Madrid 2019 was the last slapping Arsenal bottle jobs. Yeah, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk Arsenal, Jason. I know you're loving this. London's blue. Where's your European cup? Put your European cups on the table. Number 47 is gun jam. That orange right. sofa. I said right London's blue, they're moment. bloody ninth. You gotta be better, be Fulham. That shit out of here. I agree, Shams. This is this is killing me again. This is not me like trying because, as I said, Foden didn't show up in the second half, and there was a few that didn't show up in that in in the second leg. Sorry, but yeah, that's that just Jude. a wave. Man. Jude, Jude showed awful, up. awful, and it awful, awful in the first leg. And the first leg, awful. Second leg, second leg, second leg. He even said second even second leg. I said awful in the first leg. Second leg, he even had to say. Yeah, we had to sacrifice, like, we had to sacrifice, like, we didn't. His touch was amazing leading up to that goal, but he wasn't good. Anyway. Again, that he had to play, he was playing up front. He had to, for me, he had to play a role. He, you got you to do a job. I feel like he, time. from what I saw, nah, it's a, it's a different type of, like, he, he, he was generally playing as a target. We're moving man, it again, bro. yeah? That's interesting. You think this is moving it? I'm just, I'm just applying context, bro. I'm just applying context. Keep it the same. He was poor. Both legs, he was poor. Call it what it is. That's the thing. You don't only care about certain teams and certain players. Call it. Let's judge. Let's judge all these lot in the same. Let's judge them with this under the same lens. It was poor. Bellingham's PR is unbeatable. He was poor first and second leg. Fair play. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just a, 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 a glazer. As Rodri such a sore loser, yeah, nah, he's hey. he didn't take, he's not taking, he does, he does, it, he does it a bit, he does it a bit to be fair. Where he always talks about there's only one team that came to play, and there's only <laughs> fuck Nathan, there's only, um there's only there's only one team that comes to play, and he hates it when another team will 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 sit in and maybe show a different bro. He, Nathan just pissed me off that comment for. <laughs> hey, let's go yeah, over to the Allianz, man. Is, it's a. It's always on. It's on the. It's on you lot to break them down. Like nobody, football doesn't have to be played one way. Like nobody has to. It's the same with Liverpool when Klopp will come and cry that. Uh, how are you coming to play like this? Like nobody's gonna come and open. Yes, yeah, just, sort of just, just shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up and go play Chelsea, bro. Um, that's all. <laughs> it just shut up. Go FA Cup on the weekend. Just go play Chelsea. Just shut up. No one's trying to hear. You. And why are you doing presses? Shut up. Um, Allianz. What a, those of you that decided to tune into the Allianz instead of watching the treble winners versus the perennial Champions League champions, jokes on you bums. That game there was a game that could be fast forwarded. That game is a game that if you are if you are um, career mode you would have simmed. That's a game that if you was on FM you would have gone to make some food while the game was playing in the background. One nil Kimmich and really and truly, if you watch the extended highlights. They're pretty much the same as the normal highlights. There was nothing there. It was quite a flat match. 
a match of two teams who didn't want to lose, two teams who didn't even play pretty well. And that, the sad part from an Arsenal standpoint is how you come out of a tournament knowing, yes, in the grand scheme of things, before a ball was kicked at the start of the season, yeah, quarterfinals, I get to the quarterfinals, which I haven't been here, but you look at what was up for grabs. You look at how you played. And when you leave a tournament knowing you didn't give it your all or you didn't give it your best, you only have yourselves to blame. And that's how Arsenal have to look at themselves. So, and I've seen a lot of discourse on the TL talking about, um, a lot of talking about Mikel Arteta. We'll get into that. But we have to start with the players. And we have to start with, we have to start with the players. And predominantly, I'm going to give the defenders a bly because all season they've been our best. They've been our best players. So the centre back pairings have been good. Ben White's been good. And I'd say Rice, but in the last three games, Rice hasn't been good. But still, my focus isn't on them. I'm just going to look at the attackers. Why not? My focus isn't on them. We no, didn't, we no. Didn't. This is, do, do you be fair now. You be fair. My, if you want to pull out my, from other teams, call out the whole, Don't go for the easy targets. So, so who did this time? So wait, wait. So who? Target. No, let me finish. Don't interrupt me. You've owned it. Yeah. I'm gonna let you land. Don't go on easy targets. I'm not Sam. going. There's, the defenders are getting onto the. What am I gonna say to the defenders? Oh, I'm just saying. I'm, just, I'm gonna let you land. They should have defended. They should have defended better. They should have defended better. Okay, let me land. land. Because I want to. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I'm not gonna start. Well, they should have defended better. So da, 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 yeah, they should have defended better in that moment. But I'm gonna ask you this: in the remaining, in the in the 90 minutes of that match, and I would say 45 minutes of the first leg, what our attackers, please, like, please do something, rise it. Do you get what I mean? Like, yeah, they did. They did in terms of uh, Trossard and Jesus when they came on. But the defenders were at fault for the first leg. The defenders were at fault for the first leg. If we're talking specifically about this game, the, at the end of the day, the attackers did not turn up whatsoever. Both the ones that came on, both the ones that, and the ones that started. Again, Odegaard trying, he tried and he tried trying by himself. But you have to look at it. Saka, why you play like that? Martinelli, why you play like that? Have us. That was some shocking performances from, uh, from your attackers. I said, have that, that us, why do you play shocking. like that? And, and you can only... I'm just... You know what, yeah? It's the cynic... The, 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 the cynic in me is kind of the cynic in me is happy like there's all this discourse and I just want it to completely keep building the media circus to keep building how Saka's had a bad season and he's not the best right wing and he's not the best dressed ring because I want everyone to be right. Cole Palmer's better than him. Foden's better than him. Bowen's better. Whoever's better than him. Let Saka rest for the Euros. Let him come off the bench. You lot, because obviously I know everyone's trolling but you lot really mean what you're saying if Start Cole Palmer ahead for England. Let Saka rest, please. You lot are right. You've all won. Let Saka rest. Because this boy needs a damn break. Not because... And 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 I'm not saying that, oh, yeah, because he, he's just... Because he's run out of ideas. So I'm not talking fatigue now. Sorry. Martinelli and Saka were piss poor, but... Nate said, Martinelli and Saka were piss poor. But honestly, why do they have to be the only wingers in this semi-good slash border elite that have to defend more than attack? Good point. I'm I'm getting onto the Saka in the sense of like run out of ideas because it gets a bit samey. Um, Jason says Arteta has them doing full back shifts and expect them to attack full pelt on the other end. Um, interesting. I don't think you can group them together. I don't think what's happening to Saka has happened to Martinelli. I feel like I feel like Martinelli is heavily scrutinised. In comparison to what he has to, do, in comparison to Saka, Saka gets a lot of help on the right wing. Martinelli always is in isolated situations, and he's often has to be that because we only have one person, only one fast person is in place for Arsenal, and that's Martinelli. That already is an issue. So in transitions or encounters, Martinelli's always the outlet. He never gets the over. There's no, there's no such thing as a left back overlapping at Arsenal, which is already a problem. And now there's no such thing as like a stable left centre mid. So Martinelli is literally on a flank alone with no creativity. So, and then he gets judged a lot more, maybe because he's not as seen as Halen or whatever, but he's run out of ideas as well. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. He, um, he I can't lie. When I, 
from both games I've seen of him on the on the left wing against Bayern, I don't know where it is. Maybe he did it. Maybe in my head he did it a bit more when he was younger. But he don't take risks with the ball no more. I don't know whether it's an Arteta thing where he's scared to lose the ball now and he just he'd rather just do the safe option and just like pass it back. But you'd think that like, with someone with his pace, like there was numerous times when he was one on one with the right back and he didn't even Kimmich. take him down the line. Like he does the easy option. You don't go around the outside, okay, Mitch. It's just samey. It's very predictable. And you're just thinking. And it's like your you're, you're fast winger. He's it. not, for me, he's never been a great dribbler, but you've got enough pace where you can knock it Separation. and try your luck. Try your luck at least. Then you get then you have a Havertz and no Saka gets more slander on Twitter than Havertz than yes Saka gets more slander on Twitter by the rivals because it's just jealousy and envy he's the better one but generally he gets more slander because and they move the parameters to judge him which is fine I understand it but I'm talking about with from within if we analyze how much help one person has and how much scrutiny from within the other how much of a blight one gets it's not fair. Even from our tail. Saka will have a having a two out of ten, Martinelli be having a five out of ten. And he always hooks Martinelli. But yeah, um Saka. Pardon? Saka, that I said that performance from Saka, it was yeah. Again, and that performance and then and then that performance from Saka in the sense of like he showed he actually for once in a very, very, very long time. I don't think I've seen that from him. He showed his age. Russian corn Russian free kicks, mm. four corners, even a quick free kick. It was a good idea, but you Ben White weren't even awake. Like, if you're gonna do that, Ben White's got to be awake, and you've got to be. It's got to work. You got to get a shot off, and then at least do something with the corner. There's just Arsenal just look frail in, in the sense of just looked very, 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 very inexperienced, scared, and not knowing how to change gears. That's it as well, like. After you lot went one nil down, there was no difference. There was no difference from before you went one nil down to when to after you went one nil down. Even, even in the last minute when you're just passing it around your centre backs, like you need a goal, you ain't got the like target meant to be lumping it in the box. But you don't. You, you, I don't. You send Saliba. You send Gabriel you up don't there. Take, you if you don't take. Headers. If you don't take risks as well, like we've seen it. Like I said, Champions League. It shows us year after year after year. That is, is moments. Shot you could if you don't take a shot, it you know, it's not gonna deflect and go into the back of it. If you don't take a shot, it's not gonna bubble, hit someone's foot and then hit a defender's flailing arm and you get a penalty. Like, like you, lot these, going, you lot going out one nil is the exact same if you went out two you know. Like the way you didn't throw like throw caution to the wind, throw bodies at the goal, is like you went out one, you went out what three two. If you went out four two, it's the same thing, but at least you you probably would have created a, a, a decent-ish opportunity. Like, watching you lot try and create in that last minute was literally like, if we don't pass this ball into the net with, like, 100 passes, we're not going to score at all. Yeah, pass by, yeah, death by passes. Now, let's get through some of the comments before I jump onto our tether. So we can start from, we're at square one again. Uh, who was that? Was that was that Nathan? Nathan, we're at square one again. Do you believe you're at square one? What do you no. like? How do you see next season? No, going? We're not at square one again. That's not, I don't believe so. Square one is where and I am left and Arteta picked up. That's not, well, that's not where we are. So, what do you think takes the project into the into the next stage? Let's get through the comments. I'll jump onto that and then I'll give Bayern their track compliments. Every wing a track back to help their fullback. I agree, Josh. Um, I agree. Martinelli has no help. He used to have Shaq and Zinni overlapping. Uh, Saka gets more slander than Matt Lenny, in my opinion. Banks, great point. It's kind of like how Pep's turned Greenwich into a recycling winger. These are becoming a bit more, more robotic. Josh says, I get that, but Saka's had moments where he's not playing well and can still give you something. Chelsea away with their Trossard assist. Jason says, so you reckon you need superstars who will take the game by the scruff of the neck? And Nate says, Arteta deserves to get rushed. His arrogance is a fucking disgrace. Right. So, um, thanks, guys, for the interaction. But on to Arteta and to answer your question, Banks, as to what takes us to the next level. I think it's star power now. Mm. I think it's a maverick. It's a star. Whether that be in the form of a... In that form of being a 20-plus striker. I think... I think now you need star power. You need attackers. I think Arteta is very always led with the defense. The defense is sorted now and solid. You've never had in in my life 
as an Arsenal fan, we've never had a defence this good. So that's fine. Now you need yeah, you need one you could get one more there later. That, but that's not the priority. The priority now is star powers and attack. Someone who can compete with Saka. We've seen what competition how not having competition has a reverse effect on someone. We need a, 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 a we need an LCM that starts and rises and rises the level again. Declan Rice shouldn't play eight. At the, at the highest level, he can't play eight. I'm sorry. You think he should play six? He's a six. He can't play eight at the highest level, no. And then, so we need a star striker, a winger, and a left centre mid. Then we're cooking with some gas. But yeah, if we talk about our habits, t- obviously, I don't, I don't mean to bring up habits all the time, but habits obviously fit somewhere. You talked about a striker, star eight, and a um, what else did you say? A left, uh, a winger. Havertz obviously fits in the Arteta's eyes. He fits somewhere into there, somewhere into this picture. <laughs> Bro, this is not me. This is your manager. He fits in like your manager saw your manager literally spent sixty four million pounds on this player. Put it down, just put it down. Listen, Bro, listen, listen you don't to have me. To convince me to put listen it down. to me. Your listen to me. 60. Yeah, listen, listen to me. And this is where you Arteta can't trick me. A player, if a player, if you spend sixty-five million pounds on an attacking player, and the people who love him the most tell you his strengths are running, aggression, movement, stamina, it's a waste of money. But where did what did he think his strengths were before he signed him? Though he thought it was a left centre mid, and he thought he thought he had the like the technical dribbling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he, had, he must have thought he had all of that. Yeah, and why it's a bad signing. Even though he's playing well, like he's had a good season. Sorry, why? It's a, he's had a good, a bad signing can have a good, a bad player can have a good season. But why it's a bad signing is because it makes no sense how you can sign a player worth sixty-five million, making them one of the, oh, the highest-paid player in the in the squad, yeah, and you still need a player that plays in his position to come into the 11 and you still need a player that plays into his secondary position to come to 11. It makes no sense. Wait, it's only, it's only really our that I'll be able to explain what he, what he sees in Havertz because you're right, all of those like, qualities he does have, but it doesn't make him elite in any of those positions, which doesn't help. Which doesn't no, help. it's not good enough. It's just not the level. level. It's not the level. It's not the level. It's just it. So, last but not least, Arteta is to blame because you. This is the per- this was the perfect. Plan. Only Timber was out. You you had your whole squad fit, but with your whole squad fit, seven of them are duds. Like you don't trust them. You don't trust Partey. You don't trust Vieira. You don't trust ESR. You don't trust Nelson. You don't trust Inketia. You don't trust Cedric, obviously. So why are they there? For the Carabao Cup that we went out in in October or wherever we went, why are they there? That's what you Nelson, need to ask yourself. Nelson for. got a new Nelson, Eddie, and Ketia. All of them got they new, got contracts. So why are they there? You have to ask yourself this question again. So that's why. That's where I'll say Arteta's at fault. Stop putting. Stop. Now you need to. You need people. You need to sign squad players that are good enough to start in the eleven. Chelsea, that's one reason I hate rated Chelsea. Chelsea would have a good player in the 11 and have a player just as good on the bench. So, like, that player's position ain't guaranteed unless they're at a world-class level. That's what makes a good squad. Not mm. bodies. Not useless bodies. Because, you know, the, you know, just, you, and you know what the issue is at Arsenal? This is where I'm going to end. ESR, Nelson, all these men, all them, that group of about six that I named that are quite disposable. Everyone's seen them PP, the pure profit man. No, and not and, and Vieira and people like that, aside all of them collectively. You know whose space they're taking up? Yeah. Louis Skelly, Ethan Wanieri, these 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 part, these people there. Do you get these are the people's spaces? The youngsters are the place. The youngsters are supposed to be going on away trips to Germany with us. About four youngsters could take it, and these man's spots because they'll be getting trust minutes. You can't give senior squad players trust minutes. It's disgusting. Unless they're coming back from a long-term injury. And that's where our tetas at fault. He needs to be ruthless now because this ain't a daycare. We're not looking after people. So go that's get the it. PP man out. Do you agree with this?
No. It's it, it's not Ooh. underwhelming. Rare's been okay. Rice has been excellent. Um, Timber is null and void. Let's just say we made three signings then, because Timber's, we've not seen him since the first game. So two of them have been good. One of them has had a good season, but it's not a good signing. So if, wait, one of them's been good. One of them's been null and void. Yeah. And then no, let's say, let's say let's just say we've had three signings. Yeah. Yeah. So so I'm removing Timber because we had four with Timber. So mm. Ray has been good. Ray has been good enough. Rice has been excellent. Havertz is not a good signing, but he's had a good season. Okay. So so I don't think it's been underwhelming. I just also want to say Well, you think you don't think when when you when you go from a title race that you narrowly missed out on last season, you, you don't think that you would have wanted a bit more of a jump. I think I think um the I think the importance of Shaka was under on underrated I feel because a, a cer- certain things happened the signings were good enough and they performed to a certain level but as a squad as an 11 we moved back because Zinchenko just just farting every week so <laughs> his level dropped off significantly that left back position dropped we lost Shaka left centre mid dropped which also obviously affected Martinelli not being able to lock up that position so like we like the, the 11 moved back but the signings took us forward so we made a we were progressive i think in the way in which he played because it was less frantic and it was more controlled so i don't think it was underwhelming jason just doesn't agree he just thinks it was a meaty window but, I, but i've got i've got something to say to jason though <laughs> because at the end of the day he's got so much to say come chelsea you don't even have anything to talk about that's very interesting you know who's had a meaty window? Chelsea at the turn of this decade. In the last four, in the last five years, you've had every meaty window's been meaty. You know why, Banks? They're yeah. looking for a striker, looking for a striker to assist Jack Skin, yeah? You know, thing is still on the books. Lukaku's still on the books. Go sort that out. <laughs> let's really talk about it. You, signed, you spent 100 million on Lukaku. Let's, let's, you spent 100 million on Lukaku, and then he, he literally, as soon as he came, he was talking disrespect on your club, saying, I don't really want to play. Let's let's talk about it. You spent sixty five on Cucurella. You Cucurella costs the same as Kai Havertz. Let's talk about it. Nah, we gotta talk about that. We gotta talk about that on the Premier League show. Jason, Jason, nah, just no, getting, you know I mean? he's getting to come to the fight back because he's trying to flame your club. We're gonna he's trying to flame your club. And then anyway, I want to shout out to I think Lima and Goretzka. I think Thomas Tuchel also out coached Arteta because I 100%. think Lima in the first leg, Lima in the first leg, it was clear as day he did the Herrera job on mm. Odegaard, right? And if he does that, simply move Odegaard into a 10 and go double pivot. I just, I thought it was such a no-brainer. Rice was playing poorly as the anchor. Rice was playing poorly and tried to play as an eight and then be a, at this level, you can't you're not you're not good enough to play eight in a Champions League quarter final against Bayern Munich because the real eight side. Rice was bad. Rice, Rice, this was this no, was but, a learning curve. This was no, a learning but, curve. But what I'm Rice. saying is what I'm saying is Arteta should have seen that and be like, cool, double pivot. What him and Jorginho or him and Partey? Him and Partey. I think why it has to be Partey instead of Jorginho, even though Partey's not fit. And here's where he went wrong. Partey starts the Villa game because he needs to get the sharpness and the legs in. And if I Partey, if no, 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 because Partey, you'll say why he's combustible and he's injury injury prone. Not even that. Partey, but you lot have been on a up until the Villa game. You lot have been on a winning run. Like we have to. That's that's another thing we have to we have to accept. Right, here's, so here's why this is what you're going to say is void. He changed it anyway. So you that's can't say that. Like, no, that's he changed he it. He changed it anyway. And the change I'm saying is a lot more large. Is a lot is more is minimal compared to what he actually did in real life. Keep the back for the same against Villa. Put Partey in alongside Rice to prepare for the buying game, which is still going to be strong enough, and then play. But then Tr- Trossard and Jesus, one of them starts, and they keep the other one, like whether it's Havertz or vice versa. If Jesus starts, then Martinez. Do you get what I'm saying? But it would have been two. I what you're saying. But I'm saying Partey would have then had sh- enough sharpness to go into the buying game, play Odegaard in a 10 so he can move because Lima was following him. If he goes to the left side of the pitch, Lima will then try to hand him off to Goretzka, and then it's a bit crazy, it's a bit more confusion. But it was so simple. 
It was so yeah, simple. Nah. We definitely got to give we got to give Bayern two shows, the midfield pivot, Muzia. I don't think it was a hard pivot. fix, but hey, I don't think it was a hard fix, generally speaking. I genuinely Muzi... don't, but no, it's not fashionable to play double pivot two and two and four two three one. But I think he was just not malleable. Well, we've, not seen Arteta, the, we've seen unless Arteta is chasing the game, he rarely ever diverts from his. His philosophy and, and, and that's how... and that's the naivety and in his and his children showed that on the pitch. So it's children. Muziala is he just I love like I love his little touches when he when he dribbles. There was times when there was times when he was on the touchline and I was like, there's no way this isn't going up for no, he'll throw. get out of him. He'll get out of him. Yeah, he'll it's naughty it. though. It's naughty. He's uh he's, he's special. He's special, but again. I'll ask you this on, on the world class thing. Like, are these men, do you know what I mean? Who's like, if we're holding all things constant, winning the Bundesliga is world class? I think Muziala is world class. I can't lie. Muzi- okay. Muziala just, he's just different gravy. Like, put him in any league. Well, let me not say that because Bundesliga is tricked before, but I just look at him. I look at more, more. I just look at footballers and just think, rah, you're just a good footballer. Like, I feel like if you just put no, him on a park, he's, he's just going to ball. He's better than Jude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's calm. Like, not a, at least, not you, at least you know At least you know what At least you know what you're saying. No, it's not. It's not like... You like, know what you're saying. No, he's, he's, saying. he's better than Jude. Yeah, Muziel is the sta- like he's one of like in terms of the young G's, he's going to be one of the standards. Like he's he's the one you look at and be like, rah. If you can play football like him, if you process the game, that's another thing. Just the way he, he looked like he processed the game. Muziala is a homeless celeb. Oh, what even made you go there? Muziala is a world class yet, in my opinion. He's closer than Saka and Foden. How many tens would you put above him, though? Just because, hey, hey, this is one thing we need to do. Just no, because I agree. No one, I just agree. no one's I, in the I world agree. class, just because I no agree. one's in the lesson doesn't mean you, you become top set. Listen, <laughs> the top set, just because no one's in, in top set doesn't mean that second set becomes top set. Let's need to, that's I one agree. thing we're doing I in this generation. That sentiment. But I just feel like you put, like, you just look at him, whether, and he scores, it's not like he doesn't score the goals. It's not, it's not like the numbers don't back up as well. But then the eye, like, I, the eye test just, he, he passes the eye test in terms of footballers who like the football at their feet. For a number 10... No, 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 no. I test, I test, yeah. I test his peak, but I'm holding him to the same param- parameters that we hold certain players to. So, no, he's not world-class. Who do you think is... What, who are the world-class 10s out there? Do we still have 10s in the game? Okay, who's world-class players that play in Muziala's position? Because I see him as a 10. Um... Uh... No one that I can think of. Is KDB no a ten? Way. Huh? Is KDB a ten? Yeah, I'll count. I'll count with KDB as world class. Wherever. Yeah, you KDB is. Yeah, it's a KDB. Fair play. I can't lie. Maybe I've got. Maybe I've gotten early, but I'm putting him right up there, man. There's just no, there's no, no. I'm not saying just... he might not get there. But I'm just saying like we can't put him in the world class bracket because he won the Bundesliga. Nah, forget Bundesliga, bro. Forget Bundesliga. Like, just look. Looking at the boy play football, I just hey, think hey, he's, you better tap he's your, boy. Tap like he's, your there, he's there. He's there. Tap your dongle, bro. Pause, but you gotta tap that Wi-Fi, man. Oh, is it freezing up? Oh yeah, all oh, right. You're good now. Yeah, You're enough. good now. You're good now. You're good now. You're alright, man. Jason, a sad man in his own league. Of course, he will twerk for others. No, I can't lie. I agree with Shems. Top five in your position doesn't mean you're world class anymore. It's probably top three, but it doesn't have to be forced. I agree. I agree. Banks, you must be watching 2021 because he was out over both legs, man. Nothing special. Oh no, man. I just love seeing. Yeah, no, you, you're, you're, gla- you're a glazer, like he said. But the, player, my, part, my part, my part, my figure, and your standard of football in the last couple of years, you don't watch good ball. So now everyone's just getting a bly. Anyway, let's move into the. Where are you? You still there? Okay, you're back. Yeah. So, Banks, glad you enjoyed that spectacle. So it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. Let's move what? over to Bergamo. Is that what I look like? 
Oh, my God. Let's move over to Bergamo. So, Liverpool had the tough task of coming back from a 3-0 deficit for the Europa League. Now, I I think this was done before... I think this was done before it started, but Liverpool gave themselves a glimpse of hope when they went 1-0 up within like the first 12 minutes. Banks, I wanted Liverpool to stay in the tournament. I can't lie to you. Why? You say I'm a Glazer. You're a big Liverpool Glazer, you know. No, one you know day, why? One day, Let I'm, a very, there's, I'm just going to tell the chat, there's footage out there that one day, I'm not saying when it's going to come out, but one day it's going to come out and it's going to be... Well, I wanted Liverpool to be... stay in the, in the tournament is because I think it will impact the title race. Oh, you just wanted them to be playing games to what, Thursday, Sunday? Yeah, if you just let me land rather than just trying to bite back. Pause. But, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Oh, fuck that, man. I, it's been it's been too good a week of everyone just losing. I couldn't let Liverpool just, like, just because they need to stay in the tower. Nah, everyone, everyone got to hold it. Oh, rah. Oh, rah. Oh, damn. Oh, man. See you Tuesday, buddy. Oh. <laughs> oh man I'll see oh, you Tuesday man. you got City and Arsenal I will see you on Tuesday brother this guy said and that's what's funny about Chelsea fans I swear they're like ninth they come to the top half of the table and they start talking spicy if you don't go slap you back down to 11th if you don't talk too loud you better you better, <laughs> better behave yourself uh, it's, just, it's just free smoke on Tuesday then it's just free smoke it's free smoke they're shit we're not we're not, <laughs> we're not, we're not going back and forth with Chelsea. They're actually shit. Like everyone's looked at Arsenal's fixtures and gone, oh, maybe Tottenham they drop points or United. <laughs> no one said Chelsea. Yeah. Anyway, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah. So, at Liverpool, Klopp's farewell tour, Carabao Cup, bloody hell. It's been a beautiful sight just seeing their farewell tour just crumble. Like, yeah, I do you feel the same way? Do you just like is it just me? Am I sick or I just love like it's been yeah, great because because Klopp can't act like that wasn't a play, it was a play, yeah. He was you, he thought it was gonna be power friend before he had the, the Real Madrid power friendship, it's different. The power friendship wasn't gonna carry over the line. If Carlo and Charlotte you said, I'm retiring tomorrow, these lot are doing everything they can to win a quadruple, yeah, 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 because yeah, it yeah, means yeah. more. Like, yeah. these lot should have never used the Trent. You should have never used the term it means more because you don't know what it means. You Liverpool don't know what it means. Yeah. There's clubs that yeah, know no, what it no. means. They're just going to just give the man a rest, let him rest. Klopp's going to realise he missed the game too much in about 18 months' time and come back anyway. So Not to the Prem, but probably go take well, the Madrid to when, No, when the Carlo goes to Brazil, we'll take the Real Madrid job. Xabi Alonso's waiting though. He's just ready. Xabi Alonso's ready. Yeah, Alonso will probably go Liverpool. Nah, what next year? No chance. God, boy, anyway, maybe Xabi Alonso. Come. If he wanted to go to Liverpool, the time would have been now. Liverpool's gonna <laughs> sign a new manager unless they sack him within a year. It's all gonna, it's gonna be perfect. It's getting late, right? It's already eleven. All right, let's quickly talk and bap him, man. He had a stinker and he still scored two goals. That's my goat, man. It's what I'm saying. Stats. That, that Savage Dan really is, is taking us to the new place with the bikini analogy. Because it's that's, <laughs> Word. We're going places with that. Like this generation. That bikini analogy was elite. We're going places with that. No lie. Barcelona. If I if Arsenal went out like that, I'd understand the corn. Like right now, Arsenal. F- I don't think Arsenal fans are like, like you said, when we're we're like quite upset by like, you know, when you're upset with, at yourself more so than everybody else. If Arsenal went out like how Barcelona went out, whoo, that's see, funny. That's you funny. see Rajo Rajo subtweeting like giving little nah, subliminals nah, nah. to Gundogan. Gundogan, Gund- I understand Gundogan's experience, but Gundogan, you ain't you ain't Barca. <sighs> You ain't Barca. What does that mean? What does that mean? You're not Barcelona. Araujo's wrong. Araujo's wrong, but you ain't Barca. People did the comparison to Benzema and Vinny. Benzema's Real Madrid. Mm. Uh, Gundo, you ain't Barca. You you and you here on a some. You come here on retirement on a low key thing. <laughs> let's let's not even let's not pretend. You come here on a retirement thing, 
And now, obviously, because you're one of the most experienced, yeah, we respect you, but don't, don't go speak out against the family in public. Anyway. Yeah, no, that was good. Man said, hey, bro, if you just patterned up, PSG are yeah, going nah, nah. all the business. And the thing mm -hmm. is, I'm going to see you in training on Tuesday, bro. Just, tell, just pull me aside. Just pull, I'm going to see you on training. You didn't need to do that. You didn't need to do that. Now you've caused him fighting. Shavi's leaving. Anyway, let's all burn it all down. But um, he lost his head. I don't even say he lost his head. It was just bad. Like just bad you know decision. what's mad? It didn't it didn't even look mad in real time. I can't even lie to you. What the um the, the red, card. red card? Yeah, it didn't look yeah, mad. But, but no, 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 no. As, what I'm saying is like as soon as that happens, he's gotta go. Yeah, but as soon as Bacalo got um Barcola got wrong side, you just mm -hmm. knew where it was going. And Araujo was one of the oh my god, I just saw Lukaku did to one of the AC Milan defenders. Jesus sent him off to Hernandez, sent him all the way off the pitch. He went, he went oh. sharp. They went to the furthest shop on the street. But um, with Araujo, when you're going to... He uses his pace. He uses his strength. To, it's a it bit was, of a let's coward. Not lie. Let's not lie. He was... He, 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 if he if he rated himself a little less, he won't get sent off there. Yeah, 100. He gives himself a couple yards because Barcola's like sneakily fast. He's a tall, he's a tall yeah, guy, but he's got yeah, he's, a burst. Yeah, acceleration, yeah. So, so he, he thought, he, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to duck he you down. He thought he could do him. Fair Ooh, enough. What are you gonna send off for? You can't send him off. For I that. think the play of the match, the man of the match in that game, Jesus Christ, Vitinha. Class, he's a good player. Still. <laughs> it was insane. Tidy ball. Tidy it was ball. peak. Still, so many situations he got out of. I, obviously, I was watching. I was using this opportunity to scout where we go and who's coming carpet next. I looked at Frankie. I don't know if maybe it's because coming back from an injury, but. No, nah, don't don't buy anything off of anything Dutch, anything Amsterdam, anything Ajax. I'm looking at Frankie and I'm thinking, nah. And I'm not even saying we're gonna get Vatinia, but Vatinia and, and uh, Thingy came. Think <laughs> they came. Vatinia came from the same place as Fabio Vieira. That's all I'm gonna say. What are you saying? It's not the same. They saw the, but somebody got a map book. Somebody got a box full of onions. You went shop. Yeah, you went. Yeah. Came out, yeah. One came out of Curry's with a MacBook. One came out with curry powder. I don't know what <laughs> curries you went to. I don't know what. I, I generally, anyway. But yeah. So yeah, he was he was fantastic. Um, Marquinhos, Marquinhos and Donnarumma to me, yeah. Even though they had a better game, uh, Marquinhos more so had a better second leg. The role is starting to tick. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Donnarumma. He's a goalkeeper stuck in the 2010s, man. The way he's just so rumors, and he's no, and he's and it's not even that because I'm not even talking about him not using his feet. He's probably one of the tallest keepers in the top five leagues, and he can't claim shit. Can't claim a sh can't claim a piece of can't claim a piece of benefits. Yeah, legit, he couldn't claim benefits. He couldn't claim a damn thing. Jesus Christ! Like the ball could be on top of him, and he's like Vicario, and he's like, bro, you're like six six. What's the matter with you? You don't have to jump. Put your hands up. But bro. Anyway. He just he judges it so badly every time he comes out for a thing. I'm just like, bro, you're you're literally right there. There's and no... again, I, I think Lewandowski dropped a tip. Oh, Lewandowski no. dropped a performance like. Listen. Yeah, that was that was. I know we're in, a, we're in a hating mood. Like, it's a hating type of week. But ah, you're Damn. really in your bag today. Fair play. Saka shouldn't start for England. I, I, I'm going to start pushing this narrative. Saka should come off the bench. Think, oh, Saka should, <laughs> shouldn't play. Since everyone's better than him, Saka shouldn't play. So, um, yeah, but <sighs> Lewandowski dropped a performance of an all-time Euro 2012 performance. Awful. Awful from Lewandowski. Times he should have passed his shot. Times he should have shot he passed. Yeah. Played like it was 40. One thing I always say about Lewandowski is that he's just not going to be remembered. He's going to be remembered, but not as the... He shouldn't be remembered in the... Mm, those strikers. People tried to push it. Like, he obviously did the mad numbers with Bundesliga. But again, we're talking air test. Look at what you're seeing. And he's just like... With the with the Ronaldos, the Benzemas, the, like, those calibers of strikers. He doesn't make the game look beautiful. Nah, he didn't have an error. He didn't. He had a he, where he where he, the Ballon d'Or era where he just actually shelled. Yeah, 
But you have to look at was that the COVID prem? That was a was that the COVID yeah, Champions 2020. League? Yeah. Mm. Anyway, thanks. It's been a it's been an awful it's been a special one, uh, guys. So we were gonna come on yesterday, but um, with all the penalties and everything, it literally would have had to start at like ten past eleven. So we just decided to do it today. But thanks for tuning in. We will be back on the weekend. We'll be back on Sunday after this after the FA Cup games. To be fair, um, obviously we've got Liverpool in the Prem, Liverpool Prem game, Arsenal Wolves, and then we'll review the FA Cup games. But yeah, we'll talk. We'll be talking everything that goes on this week, next weekend. Thanks for tuning in. I've been your host, Oluwa Shemi, Laurie, Kante's cousin, Lavish, whichever one you want to call me today. Joined by my ever faithful co-host, Banks. It's been a pleasure. These four weeks again. Just enjoy him. Just enjoy him. Where to Rio? Stabbing the hair. Seven shots on target. Seven goals. Like trying to, you ain't trying to win this one. Let's this go. One. Get oh, 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 o